for all of us who were born in the 60s and began our career in the late 80s or early 90s, Sabir Bhatia was a rock star tech entrepreneur name that all of us were familiar with. Now remember those days were very different three decades ago. The way the business ecosystem and specifically the technology ecosystem appears today was not the way it was then. Those were early days. India was just about opening up, reforms were happening, and we were all raring to go with all the opportunities that it would throw up. Now, in those days, Sabir went on from bits into Caltech and then on to Stanford and invented the first web-based mailing solution in Hotmail, which later got acquired by Microsoft for a whopping 400 million. So he was the original startup guy out of India even before the term startup came into vogue. And this whole thing about an Indian startup guy going from here to the US and inventing a product like Hotmail and getting acquired for a whopping figure was hugely inspirational for us. And a lot of us took our steps into the technology domain in those days and hoping to make our own billions. So I thought it would be great to get Sabir onto the channel and give you some insights and talk about some sharp insights that he's collected over the last 30 years. Now, it's one thing to learn from the experiences of a recent young entrepreneurs, which is also valuable, but it's quite another to learn from the experiences of somebody who's seen the entire ecosystem for the last 30 years, as his insights are valuable. Now, in the past, we've brought to you on the channel, I've tried to connect with you due to stalwarts like Dr. Padmashri, Dr. Subhash Kak, and Dr. R. Vaidinathan. And today it is Sabir Bhatia. And you could probably draw some inferences out of the sharp insights that he's going to be sharing with me. We speak about a whole range of topics, right? From people sensitivities, what kind of founders to trust, what kind of teams to collect, and what are those great insights which make great products. And of course, at the end of it, I have a exclusive in terms of what Sabir's next plan for India are. And they're great. And in fact, they match up to what we are trying to do on this channel, Career Attainment. So welcome to another episode of uh, Career Attainment. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing the channel and writing to me from time to time. Thank you very much. And now let's begin the latest episode and presenting Sabir Bhatia. Hi, Sabir. Thank you for being on Career Attainment on my show. It's so great to meet you. No, thank you. Nice to meet you as well. I've had the honor and the pleasure of having some real stalwarts, including uh, uh, Padma Shri, Dr. Kak from Oklahoma University and uh, Dr. Vaidyanathan, and now it's you. So uh, it's great to have you again. Thank you. So Sabir Hours is a channel uh, which is a resource, a career resource for professionals and entrepreneurs and even students. And uh, we have a fairly large and active community uh, all around India. Uh, and they look forward to, you know, kind of my videos from time to time. And I also bring to them uh, people from whom they can learn from their experiences. And that's how the channel progresses. So uh, before we get into the specific details of each questions, I, I, I thought I'll just get a general overview and where have you been for all of us who were born in the 60s and uh, uh, started our careers in the 90s, you were a tech entrepreneur rock star. How's life been? What's, what's it been about for all these years? You kind of little disappeared. So it's nice to meet you and bring people up to steam. Okay. Um, so, uh... No, I've been dabbling with the internet and, uh, you know, mobile kind of uh, apps and uh, doing a few things here and there since, uh, uh, since the time of, uh, you know, Hotmail, which was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, mostly either investing in companies, trying out different things myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of experimenting with you know, what is absolutely the right one? And, and that is always the hardest question yes. uh, to ask, you know, what problem to solve? Uh, not every problem that you think is a problem is really a problem. That's one. 
uh, if you chase markets uh, like we've uh, what I've been trying to do, sometimes they don't come to fruition. Sometimes there are life-changing events like uh, you know what happened with COVID that just uh, put a damper on all the plans. Uh, yeah. So you know it's uh, it's a very complicated question, and you know just like what happens on the internet, you don't always uh, you know nine out of ten companies just don't make it. I'll, I'll, uh, I won't, absolutely right. I was thinking, I was asking from the context of, uh, you know, you did Hotmail several years back. And uh, the important thing I thought was that a lot of entrepreneurs come and a, a lot of VC funding happens, but the recent experiences, you are the one who's seen the entire cycle, the entire tech cycle of almost three decades now. So the learnings are uh, kind of a life cycle learning. What are the differences then and what are the differences in the ecosystem now that you see? That would be really valuable to learn from you. So yeah, one great advantage for all entrepreneurs is it's a lot easier uh, to uh, bring your idea to the market these days mm -hmm. with access to cloud computing, like what you have with Amazon or Google or with Microsoft. So if you've got an idea, you just have to do the programming, and uh, you know, bring it, or at least test it out relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the advantage that you see today. Because I, when I was doing Hotmail, we had to build the infrastructure for our service ourselves. Mm -hmm. We had to do everything from the back end to infrastructure to front end to security. And now, other people just take care of everything for you. That's the advantage. The disadvantage is there are you know four billion apps on the app store. So how do you differentiate <laughs> your app from yeah. every other app? Right. And pretty much every great idea you know that has gone somewhere in the last uh, ten years has been mostly app centric. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, okay. even though you can do the same thing on the web, so, but there are innovative ideas that tie uh, you know real world kind of problems mm -hmm. to uh, you know uh, virtual solutions like you know what what uber did with uh, you know changing the whole mechanism of transportation mm -hmm. or uh, for that matter uh, you know what airbnb did which is uh, make use of underutilized resources uh, which underutilized open you know uh, housing and converted it into like uh, kind of the hospitality uh, you know uh, industry and opened it up to becoming a hotel you know homes became hotels or apartments became hotels and uh, that's just a new dynamic it's is it more easier now than what it used to be then in terms of the ecosystem it's easier and harder easier in that it's easier to try a new idea out it's harder in that everybody has an idea. You know? uh -huh. So uh, there are four plus billion people that are trying different types of apps or things to do on the internet. Uh, but I think still the ones that make it, the good news is that there is an instant audience. See, when I started Hotmail, the total internet population was maybe 15 million, 20 million. You know, uh, today the <laughs> number of smartphones in the world is three and a half billion. Yeah. So you have a market of three and a half billion. So if you think of a global product uh, that appeals to everyone, you have an instant audience. Uh, the hard part is what product to think of and how to bring it to market quickly. Uh, that's the hard part. So that let me dial back to your Hotmail days. Was it uh, serendipity or was it a planned intent? Because uh, <laughs> is is a can can you actually time any idea? I don't think. I mean, it would be nice to hear from you. But is there a timing? Is there a right timing for anything, or is it something else? I think um, everything has. Uh, there is a right time for everything because I have seen. When you ask me that question, I have seen the entire life cycle. Mm -hmm. So I have seen instances where uh, ideas were tried in 1999 and they didn't make it. Mm -hmm. But 
seven, eight years later, the same ideas became super successful. Now, what mm-hmm. changed between 1999 and 2007 or 2008? Uh, one is availability of bandwidth, right? Yes. All of a sudden, that much more bandwidth was available in 2008 to everyone that those same older ideas, which you know, you still had to do with very slow uh, kind of resources, all of a sudden became reality. Like examples of like Netflix, you know, Absolutely. Uh, live streaming. 1999 live streaming was his early days mm-hmm. wasn't so successful by 2008 you know live streaming was going on its way to becoming main mainstream and fast forward to 2020 everything is live streaming you know so much so that the traditional uh, cable services are just completely almost oh. disintermediated right same also thing with the mobility energy. and credit card penetrations, perhaps they have increased uh, as well. Yes. Yeah, the credit card penetrations were always, uh, at least in the West, that was not a problem. It was in mostly India, a yeah. problem in India and in Eastern developing countries. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know that's the beauty. And now we're looking at five G, where yeah. you'll have mm-hmm. you know ten gigabits of bandwidth available on your smart device. And uh, so you'll have to even question if you even need Wi-Fi, you know, any yeah. sort of broadband. So is was Hotmail, so back to the question is hot, like Arzu, for example, I mean, it was, you know, a platform for the internet and technology problem. It was, I think, a little before time because Kaggle is the same for now um, uh, analytics. So for Hotmail, how was it earlier? I mean, is it is it that you just got lucky and serendipity hit you or is it that you timed it? No, I think it was was a combination of uh, uh, being at the right place at the right time Yeah, and having the right idea too. Uh, You know, it's, uh, I think if the idea were uh, any earlier, it probably would not have occurred. It was the early days. And, you know, email is something that everyone uses, everyone is familiar with. Uh, What we really did was bring the ubiquity of uh, browser access to email. And, uh, you know, that made it uh, possible for us to, uh, you know, bring it to the masses, so to speak. You think Uh, think people should wait up with their ideas a bit or just... No, 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 that's... I don't think you can, you you should wait for the right time. Mm -hmm. It's... So in this whole game of... uh, entrepreneurship uh you've got to try your idea as soon as you get it kind of you know uh because there's a lot of there's a lot of luck involved in success too Uh, i i wouldn't say it's all hard work it's uh it's 99 percent hard work but ideas also need that one or two percent of luck uh in order to find the right team the right circumstances, uh, the right uh, partners, investors, yeah, to make that successful, and you know. So, is it bringing that destiny? I mean, how much did you went on to uh, from bits to Caltech and then to Stanford? So, how did the university play a role in shaping up your early career? And what do you think should universities do, even in India? I'm asking in the Indian context to kind of bring about this tech entrepreneurs uh, into their uh, realm of success? Uh, So the first thing is, I think, yeah, universities did play play a very huge role. Uh, Leaving uh, India and coming to Caltech and and Stanford gave me the whole uh, opportunity to experience a different way of thinking. Caltech and Stanford are not about... uh, uh, you know, making me smart in terms of how much knowledge I have. Both those universities are there for, uh, you know, they, they, they teach you how to think, mm-hmm. uh, not so much on how to, uh, you, you know, uh, it's, it's not the content of what they teach, it's how they approach, how they teach you to approach life problems, which is to oh. think on your feet. 
that's one. Second is there is just a general culture of entrepreneurship that exists at least around Stanford. Mm -hmm. uh, Caltech is a more theoretical uh, and more academic uh, university, you know, where majority of the uh, people go on to uh, becoming professors or scientists at places like the Jet Propulsion Laboratory or at NASA, you know. Richard Feynman. Uh, whereas whereas uh, at Stanford, almost everybody wants to be an entrepreneur from the engineering or the business school. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the big thing. You know, everybody wants to pursue entrepreneurship. So it brings me to a very important part of my discussion with you in this whole life cycle experience that you've had. You must be or must have gained some serious people insights. So two very specific questions. What are the kind of uh, co-founders or tech partners you should tie up with? And conversely, how do these kids who want to join um, startups and entrepreneurs, how do they identify uh, the, the intent and the seriousness of a tech entrepreneur from both sides? How does that match up? How do you find a good team? And how does the team kind of uh, trust you or identify a, a tech entrepreneur? That's very hard. It's a very difficult question. I think it's beyond uh, it's beyond the general uh, realm of structure that you uh, would normally look for. You know, like, oh, have you gone to the right schools? Do you have the right technical skills? It's beyond all of that. Okay. It's just uh... it really comes down to instinct. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you and then trust. Yeah. So, uh, and ultimate goals for entrepreneurs. Now, I'll tell you something which is may sound very controversial or mm -hmm. or out of the box, but I think it it's very relevant. Mm -hmm. Ninety nine percent of companies that have have seen that succeed wildly mm -hmm. really don't do it because they want to get rich. So. Uh, because the founders want to get rich. So if, if the only objective of founders is to make money, this is not entrepreneurship in the high tech area is not for them. And that is a big red flag that one has to identify when choosing the right co-founder or partner. And also, I guess, for the team to identify the right uh, entrepreneur, if the guy is only talking about... Uh, money is that uh, does that apply even to the guys who want to join a startup exactly at mm -hmm. least the first initial 10 15 20 people that want to join mm -hmm. like if they ask you what is the 401k of the plan of the company mm -hmm. uh, what kind of benefits you offer you know uh, what is my career path what is the organization structure <laughs> those are all in my experience massive negative questions okay. and those are massive red flags okay okay now entrepreneurs join companies not because there is a sure shot uh, to becoming successful mm -hmm. uh, they join because of the merit of the idea does that idea really have uh, first of all will it really change the world in a positive way. Right. I mean, that's the fundamental question you have to ask. Right. If it has already been done before and you're trying to do it because it's cheaper or it's it's for India or it's this or that, just don't do it. You know, oh. move on, do something else. Okay. For example, I, I was involved with a company. I won't name it uh, the name, but it was kind of the LinkedIn of a particular country. And it mm -hmm. had, the, but it was the LinkedIn. I mean, LinkedIn was already there over time. It went to zero because LinkedIn became the LinkedIn of that country, mm -hmm. right? Same thing with, uh, you know, when somebody tries to be the Twitter of India. Yeah. Twitter is the Twitter of India. Eventually, Twitter will come to India, you know? Yeah. So I now firmly believe that uh, it has to be an idea that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. And one that can impact mm -hmm. uh, society in a positive way. Okay. And 
out of the hundred companies that have become superbly successful don't have the business model planned out. If they are offering a positive service to someone and that someone is, is a large enough market, that company will do superbly well, regardless of figuring out the business plan at the start of it. Okay. No, oh, I think a brilliant. So I, I think I, I, the key takeaway is don't join a founder or the founder who, or even the founder when he comes up with an idea, don't look at only the money aspect of it, look at it as a world changing idea and then go for it. That's correct. I think the, 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 the geographical thing that you mentioned, the Twitter of India, I think that's more in the realms of, I think, um, regulatory governance nowadays. And that's what is, that's another controversial topic. Maybe we'll pick it up some other day, but I guess that's the reason why it's happening. But let me take you back to the moment of truth days in the, the, in the, in the uh, Hotmail days, you know, how, how was it? How did, in short, can you, I'm sure you must have told this to many people. How did it come about meeting Bill Gates and the 400 million and, uh, you know, uh, that part of the story? Um, and Bill Gates was... So, uh, yeah, I mean, the original idea to do Hotmail was very simple, mm -hmm. to make email available on the web. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't available on the web. Web was more ubiquitous than, you know, Outlook or other email clients and that was just that was the idea so it's this the simple ideas that really go very far mm -hmm. i mean uber once again what a, what a simple idea yeah. it's i can't hail a cab i got this phone i know i can find who is where i can tell you where my friend is right now what if i could find cabs yeah you know and where those cabs so i could hail it and if they they want they're looking for me i'm looking for them why not create a platform to make it happen? It's a geofencing uh, thing. Regard, I, I always, I like to really analyze why products and companies succeed. Mm -hmm. I have a very simple explanation for why Apple is the most, you know, value, valuable company on the planet. It's really simple. The simplicity is that Apple was the first to put a small operating system into something called an iPod. Absolutely. And it brought something that brought in, it touched the, it made an emotional connection with mm -hmm. the, with its customer, mm -hmm. you know, providing them with songs, unlimited 40,000 songs when most other players at, at that time were offering, you know, 100, 200 songs, two, access to all your photos, and three, a small, easy to use operating system to get to your photos and your songs. True, true. And from the iPod became the, came the iPhone. With all of this capability, all they said is you put a phone in it. It wasn't the best phone when it came out. And, you know, other companies like Motorola and Nokia were in the phone business for like, you know, almost over a decade, for decades. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't the quality of the phone. People bought it because it was a device that had photos and songs and a camera and a phone too, all in one. And then the whole concept of the app store, it became an app delivery platform or a device that just opened it up. And there was, then it was no chance for any other company. Now, what, what, what many um, ask, uh, and which probably people don't know, this whole uh, uh, story about you uh, getting into that valuation discussion with uh, Bill Gates and coming up with uh, a particular number at the end of it all, uh, that little story might be interesting for the community, more in the context of what are the mistakes to avoid by a tech entrepreneur, because you've seen the whole cycle. What are some two or three mistakes that you feel in retrospect could have been avoided or can be avoided in future by many to, uh, as an advice to many who are entering the startup program? How was your discussion? You must be thinking a lot, dialing up, <laughs> dialing back a lot, right, from time to time. Uh, so, no, I think the mistakes or the learnings from all of that is just build something that is valuable. Mm -hmm. And whether it's Microsoft or it's other companies or it's the IPO market, whatever, people will come knocking if yeah. you touch a lot of people. 
Okay. And if you provide a valuable service to a lot of people, even if you haven't figured out the business model, as long as you keep them engaged, uh -huh. you know, it, uh, it will pan out. For example, what TikTok has done right now, uh -huh. you know, phenomenal. It's got a billion plus users who are, who are being entertained by TikTok every single day. So it's yeah. a very high degree of uh, uh, engagement that it has on its platform with end customers. Mm -hmm. And that's the real value for TikTok. And like I said, even if the business model is not figured out, there are lots of older companies that are looking for high growth companies that may not have figured out the business model, uh -huh. but that are growing in terms of number of subscribers. Okay. So intrinsically, the model has to be good. But in, in, in your case, how did it happen in Hotmail? Those were the days of just about 15 odd million um, internet users. So how did, how did Microsoft see value? Is it some future proofing that you kind of convinced them or... How did that work? Yeah. So one thing is we were the leader leaders in our space mm -hmm. uh, very early on when, from the time we started. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, uh, we grew to 10 million in the first year. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, it was... Uh, uh, and, you know, as the internet was growing, we were growing with the internet as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, that's the, uh, so when we, you know, we were approached by Microsoft, it, uh, uh, we had already had a year's plus worth of lead. Okay. And what Microsoft saw was even if they were to do it on their own, it would take them a year to do it. Mm -hmm. And by then we would be at 40 million users. And, you know, uh, in those days when you're talking of a total internet size of 100 million, uh, from 15 million, it had grown to 100 million in the first, uh, in, the, in, 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 in a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, you know, it would have been very difficult to Microsoft to, for Microsoft to catch up. Uh -huh. And, and that's, uh, that's really, that really worked in our favor. Uh, and today there are over a billion users who use Outlook. You know, Hotmail yeah. became Outlook, and yeah. you know, yeah. Well, they've gone through so many logo changes. I mean, it's it's amazing. Yeah. So, but what what happened to Gmail? Of course, there's a larger uh, a platform competition which came about at a later date. But then, what happened to Gmail? And that did not happen to Hotmail, at least in the initial. Of course, later on they started catching up. Uh, you have some thoughts on that? Why that happened, and why the race was a kind of a two horse race, which uh, you know. Yeah, what happened there was really Microsoft, uh, you know, uh, kind of its thinking was a little more on focused on monetization as opposed to growth. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it just gave Gmail an opportunity to come in and plug in a hole where people were complaining about, you know, the account size being only mm -hmm. 20 megabytes or whatever, 50 megabytes. Yeah. And, hey, you know, we'll give you a few gigabytes. Yeah. Of account size and, and they won over the entire developing, you know, uh, world and all of, uh, uh, you know, all of India, all of Asia yeah. became Gmail users. I think that so, growth traction years is where they really took off, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. growth is key. I mean, listen, now when I look at an internet business, the last thing I look at is how, how it will make money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first five years, even if the company says no money, but we are going to grow on our user base from nothing to hundred million. You know, that's a great company mm -hmm. to be partnered with because I've seen this happen. Google didn't make any money for the first six years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Facebook too was like you know a little yeah. slow. WhatsApp still doesn't make any money. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's you've got to have that growth first, and okay. then you've got to worry about how you're going to monetize that. That means a lot of deep pockets for a lot of years, isn't it? Uh, not so deep now. Uh -huh. There used to be a, needed a lot more deep pockets earlier. For example, when YouTube came out, yeah, they needed like you know hundreds of millions of dollars immediately. That's why they had to sell to uh, to Google in a way. 
because they needed a, a partner with deep pockets uh, for because video was you know still very expensive. But today, thanks to cloud computing, you don't need that deep. You know, you'll yeah. find the venture capital. The hardware, the hardware stack is kind of uh, eased out a bit, I guess. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got streaming on Netflix where you can get you know tens of gigabytes of data. Even Geo has opened up the whole. Uh, network issues in yeah. India, so uh, you don't I think need the that. IT, IT infrastructure stack, as it appeared in our times, has completely undergone a change. It's much more wafer thin, much more nimble, I guess. So I guess that's why lesser number. And so once again, it's actually quite easy to become mm. uh, an entrepreneur now. But the hard part is to find the right idea. Yes. That's the hardest yes. part. Yes. You are in touch with uh, Satya Nadella and these people. Have you? Uh, no, I'm Bill Gates not. after that. No, okay, yeah. okay, okay, great. Um, one of the things was about since we talked about the logo, it was one. Of, I think the Hotmail even today, forget the technology, forget the product, forget what it was. Just in terms of the name and branding, for those in our community over here who are into this marketing thing, how did the name Hotmail come up? It was very simple, but I think it's one of the most attractive brand names even today. Just the brand itself can be valued. Uh, hugely, I guess, right? Uh, it's what was the story? HTML email, yeah. simple as that. And of and course, mail we... and hotmail, and it had that little bit of a chutzpah around that name, right? Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was just HTML email. That's why it was called hotmail. Okay, okay. So, Sabir, uh, my last question: What are your plans? You, you're one of those uh, Bay Area entrepreneurs who you know kind of are dabbling a lot of India entrepreneurship also in terms of real estate, uh, e-learning and a lot of other products. So how's the India story going for you and what are the differences that you see um, let's say in the Bay Area earlier and even now and now the current India story, what are your India plans and how do you uh, contrast them with uh, the global plans? So my latest startup which is in stealth mode, hopefully will be out in the next three, four weeks. How, when will this story air? I'm planning to air it in the next two days. Oh, in the next two days. Yeah. Maybe I can share the idea of what I'm doing. Yeah, all right. And, and You're giving uh, me an exclusive. I'm giving you an exclusive. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'll be on so LinkedIn I'm, today. Unfortunately, had we been live, it was great, but we'll be on LinkedIn everywhere, YouTube. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, how many people will view this? Uh, more than five to ten thousand initially, immediately, and then of course it'll take viral. We've got about okay. one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand uh, viewers happening at any. So moment. it's meant for people who are students, students, people who are looking at careers, and no, Maya, Maya. Ah, oh, okay. It's okay. Meant for students, career uh, folks, and people who are entrepreneurs and professionals. That's a that's so, a hundred percent overlap match with the, what overlap, we do. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. So the app is a virtual interview with me. All right. Where I instead of you asking me the questions, I will ask the questions through the app. Oh, okay. And wow. at the end of it, people get a video, which is which we call a show reel mm -hmm. of their interaction with me. All right. Okay. And I ask just general questions about startup ideas, about uh, where they are in their professional career, which not only helps uh, uh, them market themselves better, mm -hmm. but it will help them understand who they are better and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Oh, brilliant. That's so brilliant. I ask. I ask simple questions. For example, if it is a startup entrepreneur, I ask the question, what is your idea? Mm -hmm. Why do you think your idea is going to change the world? Why mm -hmm. are you ideally suited to doing this idea? Okay. You know, and what kind of resources do you need for this idea? Mm -hmm. How big is the market? So questions that any VC would ask them, I'm asking them. Oh, okay. Same thing with uh, in the... Uh, in the professional interview, I ask them questions that any person hiring them would ask them. You know, there are 500 million unemployed people in the world today. Yes. And my whole goal is to help them get a job faster. 
So one of the ways I'm doing this is saying, okay, me, Sabir Bhatia, will interview you. Okay. And you can use that to find a job. Super. Maybe we can do something together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like... Uh, so it's like a Sabir Bhatia shark tank. Yeah, it's like a Sabir Bhatia shark tank, but virtual <laughs> through the app only. Mm-hmm. And then, and it'll help them flush out their ideas better. Okay. It'll, it'll help them understand how I think mm-hmm. because the kind of questions I ask will enable them to understand, you know, uh, how to think like an entrepreneur, okay. how to think like a professional who's looking for a new job, how to market themselves better. Okay. Uh, so, and we are, we are getting this app ready. It should be ready in the next two, three weeks. You're all right if I reveal it right now in this? Or you want me to hold yeah, it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. all right. Okay. And you obviously don't have a name for it right now, right? No, the name is there. It's called it's Showreel. Called oh, Showreel. 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 Oh, wow. Okay. You have a logo? Showreel is the app. You have a logo or something? Um, not, I can share it with you once right. uh, in the next couple of days. Tomorrow I'm talking to the team. Sure, sure. So. Weekend. That's brilliant. And maybe when you come here, we can do a show together live with a lot of people. You're in Bangalore. Yeah. How do you, uh, one last question. How do you find the in, Indian entrepreneurial ecosystem working for tech startups and tech trainers right now? No, I think it's, it's like I said, it's a global platform. Mm-hmm. Today, uh, everyone, uh, this idea could have come from anyone, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, So even Indian entrepreneurs, especially uh, because they work a lot on uh, uh, mobile devices and app development and stuff, Mm -hmm. they really truly have a global platform uh, where uh, they'll find customers as easily in India as they will find in Japan or in you know, Korea or in the Middle East or wherever. So uh, that's the beauty uh, mm-hmm. for them that they, one can test their idea out in a fairly large market. And once again, they don't require massive resources. They've got access to Amazon, they've got access to Microsoft, mm-hmm. they've got access to, uh, you know, other, yeah. uh, uh, you know, back end kind of uh, cloud infrastructure. What about, be the, what about the VC and the VC budget sets and the ethics and all those kind of things in India? Do you find that at a uh, global par in terms of the money that is being I raised? I think you've got some brand name VCs now mm. who are in, uh, you know, in uh, in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, so it's and like the VCs really are. They're really there to help. Yeah. Uh, small companies grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so even though we from India think it's a very personal kind of relationship based investment, it really isn't. It's, yeah. uh, you know, the professional yeah. VCs, as long as you demonstrate growth and early success, mm-hmm. you know, you'll get funding. If yeah. not by VC A, by VC B or C or D, you know, someone. Uh, and Are I you think, planning a fund? Uh, no, no, I'm not planning a fund because, I mean, there are so many funds in the Bay Area. I mean, what would I do with a yet another fund? Right? Yeah. It's like, it'll be like a me too thing. I love, I love being an entrepreneur. That's, nice. that's the extent of what I want to do. Okay. Sabir, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I hope all your plans for showreel and all fructify to the best of uh, your expectations. And uh, I hope we can do something together when you're here and... And when like I said, Bangalore, you know, if, I can, <laughs> if I can help a few people, sure, uh, who can benefit from my viewpoints and my ideas, I'm just having a conversation with people through Shoreal. It's as okay. simple as that. Okay. And the conversation is purely on video, not a written conversation. And it's I put a video and they respond by video. Okay. So if that format takes off, super. Hey, you know what? Even if it doesn't take off, as long as I can help people, yeah, that's. So this this interview with you is going to be a showreel for showreel, I guess. That's, That's correct. That's correct. Exactly. So on that note, I'll sign off. It's late for you, Sabir, over there. Maybe a golf game when you come in and, you know, okay. meet up again. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks you take care. Bye. Take care. Okay. Thank you.